World of Warcraft has a range of different mount types available and just mounts in general to collect, but one of the best mount types available are dragons. They're just really cool and very iconic to the game. It just feels good to ride on a boss that you've defeated previously or one of the dragon aspects that you've aided. So I wanted to run through 10 of the easiest and fastest dragon mounts you can get in World of Warcraft. In fact, they're that quick that you're going to be able to get most of the mounts listed in this video within the same day. The drakes taking the first and second spot for the easiest to obtain on this list is going to be the Black Drake and the Twilight Drake. Both of these come from the same place, the only difference is they change depending on which raid size you do in the raid on. So the Black Drake will come from 10 man Obsidian Sanctum and the Twilight Drake will come from 25 man Obsidian Sanctum. These drakes are guaranteed drop rates if you do the fight correctly. If you don't do it correctly then there'll be zero chance they won't drop. And this should take you about 5 to 10 minutes on a 120 character and it can be done on a character kind of like a level 100 and above, no problem. So you'll head to Wormrest Temple which is found in Dragon Blight in Northrend and at Wormrest Temple there'll be like a lower section. You'll head down there and you'll find the entrance to Obsidian Sanctum. You either do this on 10 man or 25 man and you can do this once per week per character during the reset at least. And so if you want both of the drakes in one week, you're going to have to bring an ult and do it on an ult, but that should be no problem either. Head inside, and the only requirement is you need to pull Safarion with the three Twilight Drakes alive, so do not kill the Twilight Drakes before you pull the boss in the center. You can kill them after you pull the boss in the center, but not before. You pull the boss, you kill him down, he should take a few seconds, and then loot the chest, and you should either have your Black Drake or Twilight Drake. The third Drake up on this list is going to be the Bronze Drake, and this is another really iconic easy mount to get. This will take you about 10 to 15 minutes on a 120 character, and you should be looking to do this on a character that's like level 90 and above to make it easier. So to get this mount, you'll need to do the Cullen of Strathholm on Heroic, and you'll find this dungeon in the Caverns of Time in Tanaris. To get to Tanaris, you can either take the portal to Uldum and fly, or in the near future, they will be adding the portal back to the Caverns of Time. So if you're watching this in the future, you'll be able to use that and go there. So head into the Caverns of Time, find the Cullen of Strath dungeon, set, make sure you're on dungeon difficulty heroic and head inside. There you'll have some RP to go through with Chromie. You'll have to discover some crates and talk to her and watch an RP scene. And once you're done with all that, you'll be able to start the actual dungeon. Now the requirements behind this mount is you need to complete the dungeon in a specific amount of time. As 120 or even anyone higher than the actual dungeon, you shouldn't have any problems with this timer. Um, just basically run around, kill the flagged mobs on the map, there'll be packs of mobs that are marked with a flag, then you'll go through two bosses and then you'll escort Arthas through the dungeon. You'll kill the next boss, you'll be able to speak to him and open like a, a wardrobe, or sorry a bookcase I should say, and then you'll be onto the final section of the dungeon. There you'll just follow this pathway down, you don't need Arthas at this point. And before you go into the boss's room, the final boss's room, there'll be a path that you can actually follow that will take you round and to the left. And if you follow that around, you'll actually find an infinite dragon there. You'll be able to kill that, and once you kill that, you'll be awarded with the bronze drake on its corpse. So as long as you've done that in the timer, the infinite drake should still be there, you'll be able to kill that and get yourself the Bronze Drake. The fourth Drake up on this list is going to be the Albino Drake, which is a reward for completing the achievement to get 50 unique mounts usable on one character. And the way we're gonna go about doing this is making use of Clash Trials. So first of all, you'll wanna buy all of the mounts that you can on that current character you're playing. So if you're playing an Orc, make sure you buy all of the Wolf mounts from Orgrimmar, and then buy all the Wyverns from like the Flying Mount vendor. Just make sure you get all of these really basic, easy to buy cheap mounts basically. Once you have all of those, and you've gone across all your different alts and stuff, then the ones that you're missing, you'll want to make a 110 class trial for, preferably a mage just so it's a little bit easier to get around. But you'll make a class trial, you'll send it a few hundred gold, and then you'll send it out to your kind of faction's mount vendor. So if you're a troll, you'll head over to the raptor vendor. You'll buy all of the mounts, you'll add those to your collection, and if you're able to do that for all of the different races on Horde or Alliance, you'll actually get about 40 odd mounts from this. So those alone will bring you very close to the 50 required. And then if you've gotten the other mounts already mentioned in this video, you should be pretty much at 50. And if you get the rest of the mounts listed in this video, then you'll definitely be at 50. So that'll give you another easy to get mount, should take you like 20 minutes or so. And the only real requirements behind this is that you have um, BFA and you have an active sub. I think you might even be able to do this without BFA, I'm not too sure. But either way, you will need an active sub. 
and most likely BFA just so you can make the class trial. So go and buy your mounts, get your 50 and then get your albino drake. The fifth mount up on this list is actually a two for one because completing this achievement will reward you with the ironbound proto drake and the rusted proto drake from completing the same achievement. And this should take about an hour or so for a 120 character and you want to be looking to do this at least a level 100 and upwards. And to get these mounts, you need to complete the Glory of the Ulduar Raid Earth achievements, which you can do in the Raid Ulduar, which you'll find in Storm Peak's Northrend. You can do this on 10 man or 25 man, but 25 man's probably better just so you don't one shot some of the bosses by accident. And also, if you do the last boss without any help from any of the keepers, then you'll have a chance for Mimron's head as well, which is another mount. That's a low drop chance, but you've still got a chance for it if you do this on 25 man. So pick your difficulty and head inside the raid, and for the most part, these achievements are pretty self-explanatory. Just kill a boss in a certain amount of time or in a certain way, but there's one that's a little bit more tricky, and that is Iron Dwarf Medium Rare. Especially being 120, it just becomes harder the higher level you are, basically. So head over to Razor Scale, which is the second boss, and what you'll want to do is take off some of your gear, or a good chunk of your gear, and make sure you have some kind of low damaging spell, like I have Crackling Jade Lightning, which hits for absolutely no damage. Um, pull the boss, and basically what you want to do at that point is nothing. You want to wait it out for quite a while, and all you need to do is make sure the engineers fix the four harpoons, or two, depending on which difficulty you're on. Make sure all harpoons are repaired either way, and then you can let all of the engineers die, etc, and eventually all the NPCs will die, but that's not a problem as long as your harpoons are fixed. Then what you want to do is just leave the mobs to be on you continuously and wait it out until you have 25 guardians or more. Once you have 25 guardians, the boss should have actually enraged and then you'll pull the boss down using the harpoons. You'll stand in front of it and then you'll kind of DPS it down to sub 50%. So make sure you don't kill razor scale at this point. You just want to take it to sub 50%. Once it's at 50%, it will stay grounded permanently. And then you can stand in front of it with all the mobs that you've piled up, making sure you have 25 guardians, not just 25 mobs in general. And then the boss will do a deep breath, and while it's enraged, it should kill them all within one to two deep breaths, meaning making the achievement a lot easier, because you're not having to rely on DPSing them down or anything like that. It makes it a lot more trivial, so as long as you don't one-shot the boss, that's really the only way you can go wrong with this achievement. And if you've taken off your gear, that shouldn't be a problem. The rest of the achievements, as I said, are pretty straightforward. Just kind of think a little bit ahead. Some of them will require you to take off some gear so you don't one-shot stuff. Some of them will require you to be a little bit patient. But for the most part, they're pretty easy and straightforward. Complete them all and you'll bag yourself two mounts. The sixth drake up on this list is going to be the red drake, which you can purchase once you're exalted with the worm rest accord. To get to exalted, first of all, you'll have to hit friendly. And to do that, I'd recommend questing in Borean Tundra at Amber Ledge. There'll be a quest chain there you can follow that will give you reputation with the Worm Rest Accord. It'll take you into Cold Aura, and it's quite long, so you should end up friendly throughout that quest chain. Once you are friendly, you'll head back to the Worm Rest Temple. You'll head to the top of it, and you'll find a Quartermaster who will sell, sell you a Tabard. You'll buy that Tabard, and that will allow you to farm Wrath of the Lich King dungeons for reputation. You want to either do Pit of Saron on Heroic and just farm the trash, not the bosses, or you can do Halls of Lightning as well, and you can run that on Heroic once, do the full dungeon, and then switch it onto Normal, and then just run through the dungeon over and over again. From doing these, you should end up with about a thousand reputation every five or so minutes, meaning it'll take you about three or four hours, maybe a bit more depending on your class, to get to Exalted. So it's not that long of a grind, and then once you are Exalted, you can head to the Wormrest Temple again, Head to the top, find the Quartermaster, and purchase yourself a Red Drake. The seventh Drake up on our list is going to be the Drake of the East Wind, which is a reward from completing the glory of the Cataclysm Raider achievements. These will take you through Throne of the Four Winds, Bastion of Twilight, and Blackwing Descent. All of these are very easily soloable at 120, and the full achievement run should take you about two hours, so it's not too bad. Now, most of these are pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. They do get a little bit more difficult if you're doing the raid on Heroic and trying to do the achievements at the same time, but they're still very doable. Just keep in mind some of them might require you to take off some gear so you don't kill it too quickly. Some of them need you to read the achievement text, but for the most part, you know, you should be able to read the achievement and have a good idea of what's going on. The only ones that get really tricky are the ones that are in Throne of the Four Winds, if you're doing it on Heroic at least. Stay chill, you just need to go to the frost platform and get a few stacks, get you like six or so stacks. Then you'll head over to one of the other boss platforms, kill the boss, 
head back to the frost one, reset your frost or refresh your frost stacks, I should say. Then head to the other boss that you haven't killed, kill that, and then finally head back to the frost platform, making sure you've got seven or more stacks and kill the boss. For fall play, this is one where you'll need to take off some gear. You'll DPS down the boss a little bit, and then you'll just basically wait it out. And um, don't take the boss too low. You'll want to have him about kind of 60%-ish. And eventually a little ad will come out. Once the ad is out, you can DPS the boss even further, taking him quite low at this point. And then you'll kill the ad, and then you'll have a few seconds to kill the boss while the boss is affected by the buff. Quite easy. Then you'll just run through the other achievements, and you'll end up with the Drake of the East Wind, which is a quite nice looking Drake. The eighth Drake up on this list is going to be the Blood Bathed Frostbrood Vanquisher. And this is a reward from completing the glory of the Ice Crown Citadel Raid of Ten Men. And these are all pretty soloable achievements. It should take you about two hours to do. There's just two achievements in particular that are kind of rough, especially depending on the class that you're playing. The first one up is Portal Jacker. And this is rough because it requires you to heal the boss. Now, for most people, that won't be a problem if you're playing like a Paladin or a Monk. But if you're playing a Warrior, that gets a little bit more tricky because you don't have a heal. But what you can do instead is you can actually bring in a bandage. You can buy a deep sea satin bandage. And then you can also buy the pump action bandage gun. And those two things together, you'll start off with the bandage. If you still need more healing on the boss, then you'll use the pump action bandage gun. And those two things together should heal the boss within the first three seconds of the fight. Or maybe a little bit more, but around there. And you'll get the achievement just because you've healed the boss before any portals spawn. So do make sure you are coming into the raid with those bandages and you'll be good to go. The other one that's a little bit tricky is been waiting a long time for this. Now this one's a little bit tricky because you'll need some kind of guardian or pet at a certain point in the fight. So before you come into the raid you'll want to go and get a trinket or a talent that will allow you to spawn a guardian. There's a bunch of trinkets in the game that have an unuse effect of summoning a guardian. So just go and get one of those. Come back to the raid and head to the final boss. Head to the staircase and basically you just want to wait it out. Make sure you don't have any pets or anything present. And you want to wait it out until you have about 9 ghouls. When you have 9 ghouls then you want to summon your pet. Make sure it's on passive or summon your guardian. And then what will happen is the boss will cast Necrotic Plague. And you want to wait it out. Necrotic Plague will start bouncing between you and the mobs. It'll kill the mobs, it'll bounce back to you, and every time it expires on you, it'll bounce up to something else. And you just want to keep an eye on the debuff, and eventually it'll hit 30 stacks or more. Once that happens, you can kill the boss, and you're good to go. A couple of things to note about these meta achievements. First of all, you'll need to do this raid twice if this is your first time doing 10-man ICC, because the once bitten, twice shy achievement requires you to kill the boss in two different ways. So if this is your first time, you'll have to come back another week to get the final achievement. Also, you could do this on 25 mana and get the Icebound Frostbrood Vanquisher, which is another Drake that you could get quite easily, but the 10 man one is still the easiest because it is on 10 man. The next Drake we have up is the Ninth, and that is the Red Proto Drake, and this is going to come from another Glory achievement, which is Glory of the Hero. And this one's a little bit more tricky. Well, it's it's not so much tricky, it's just more time consuming as you're going to have to go through pretty much every Northrend dungeon to do all the achievements. So it is going to take you quite a bit of time. And there is some RNG aspects to these achievements too. For example, the Violet Hold achievements, the bosses are random in there. So you could be coming back every day for quite a while to get all the achievements done. But these runs don't take very long, so it's not that big of a deal. It just makes this a little bit more time consuming, even though it's still pretty easy and straightforward. Now, the only achievement that's a little bit difficult, I'd say, is the Incredible Hulk. And this one basically requires you to strip down, pull the Hulk mob, DPS it low, which you want to be using a low damage spell with all your gear off for. If you can't do that for whatever reason, then consider taking Res Sickness, because you should be able to do no damage with Res Sickness. And basically just DPS it low, and then DPS the boss low, but not too low, don't kill it. And then you'll be summoned to the center of the platform, a blade will come down, and the boss will kill the Hulk, and you'll be able to do the achievement. Outside of that, just do the rest of them. They're all pretty self-explanatory and quite easy with, you know, 120 character. Most of them being just kill thing X speed. And then you'll get yourself the red proto drake. The 10th mount on this list is going to be the Smoldering Ember Worm. And this one barely made it onto the list because it does require a little bit more from you. You know, you need to be 120 and a decent-ish eye level. But in terms of speed and difficulty, I don't think it's that bad once you do have the item level. It's a pretty quick run to do each week, 
And once, as I said, the item level that you need to get isn't really that difficult either. But if I was to replace this mount, I would have put on the Twilight Harbinger, which comes from the Glory of the Dragon Soul Raider. And it's another really good looking mount. So if you want something that isn't um, this, then you could go and do the Glory of the Dragon Soul Raider achievements instead. There's a couple that are a little bit difficult and there's one that will take you four weeks. But outside of that, they're all pretty straightforward. So to get the Smolder and Ember Worm, you'll need to do the dungeon version of Karazhan on Mythic Difficulty. And you need to do it in kind of like a timed run. To do this solo, you'll want to be 120 with about 360-ish eye level. That'll depend a little bit on your class and spec, but around 360 should be good enough to do this solo. The mount is on a 20% drop chance per person in the group. So if you're on your own, you're doing it solo, you'll have a 20% chance. If you have two people with you, you'll have a 60% chance. And if you have a full group, you'll have a 100% chance. It doesn't matter if those people have the mount or not, it just increases per person in the group. So you can bring people with you if you want to, or you can do it solo and you'll have a 20% chance, which is still pretty high. And you'll have a one shot of getting that every week per character. So if you have alts that are geared as well, you can run it and you'll probably get it within the first week or two anyway, as its, it's drop chance is pretty high. So you'll do the dungeon and basically once you open the gates, you'll have a timer and you'll need to get five crystals, which will allow you to summon a extra boss and then you'll get the mount from that boss. The first crystal is just after the opera event. In the crowd, you'll find the crystal there. And then just before you get to Maiden, there'll be a room to the left. You'll head inside there, there'll be a crystal near the bed. Then after you defeat Moros, there'll be a crystal behind him. Also, don't forget to pick up the keys if this is your first time doing this. And then you'll want to go to the spider section, which you'll find just before you get to Attunement. You'll turn, turn left, you'll head into kind of the section with all your spiders and stuff. Make your way to the back of there and you'll find a little area with webs and there'll be a crystal in the center of the webs. And then you'll head up to Curator, you'll kill Curator and there'll be a crystal under his corpse. Now if you are doing with this with friends, make sure it's the same person who clicks all the crystals as it can mess up with other people clicking the crystals. So just assign one person to do it. Once you've clicked all of the crystals, you'll have a five minute buff, which will require you to go to the terrace. You'll head there, you'll speak to um, Bediv, who'll be stood there, and then you'll be able to summon the boss. The boss will come down and then you'll be able to defeat the boss and have a chance of getting them out. So that does bring us to the end of the list, but I did want to give a few honorable mentions as well. First of all, time walking. This can have a big impact on the easiness of some mounts because there are some reputation drakes you can get very easily through time walking. But as time walking is a limited event, I didn't want to mention it fully in the list. But you can get the Red Drake with Wrath of the Lich King time walking a lot easier. You can get the August Celestial Cloud Serpent from time walking rep. You can get the Jade, Azure and Golden Cloud Serpents from Mr. Pandaria time walking reps. The Onyx Cloud Serpent from Mr. Pandaria time walking reps. So there's quite a few different drakes you can get through time walking. So it's definitely something to keep in mind if time walking is around. Also, if you have a guild that has unlocked the Thundering Jade Cloud Serpent, you can actually head over to your guild vendor and you'll be able to pick up this mount for about 3,000 gold. So that's another really easy drake you can pick up if your guild has access to it. But if not, you'd have to find a guild that does or convince your guild to run and do the achievements. But outside of that, that is the end of the video. And if you enjoyed this one, I actually made a video recently covering my top 10 favorite dragon mounts. So if you're interested in checking that out, there'll be a pop up now for you to head over to that video. But thanks for watching guys. Look out for more videos coming soon. See ya.